we welcome you to Getting Ready with Jamie Cart Ministries. This is Pastor Dwayne, Pastor Jamie here on site in Sandy Creek, part of Leland, North Carolina, on property that we call Zebulon. And we just wanted to show you the sign that you'll be looking at as you're driving up and down I-74. And this is the site where our second ministry complex is going to be. Amen. The Lord has told us this word. In Hebrew, it's Mahane. Mahane means two camps, two armies. Two armies. And that's what the call of this ministry is, is to raise up last days, men and women of God, yes. girls and boys of God, yes. to raise them up for this last days. We're building a campus in Heiko, West Virginia, and one here, right here, hallelujah, and this land has been given to the ministry to do this, yes. right Thank here in Leland, North Carolina, just 13 minutes from Wilmington, North Carolina. Yes. And we are already on WWAY on Sunday mornings, and we've been on TV for a little bit here now. And so please join us on Sunday mornings as that word is coming out to you and feeding you. And if the Lord is calling you to be a part of this mission, you know in your heart that God is raising you up to be a warrior for this time. This ministry is for you. We are being sent here for you. So check out the ministry website, see what we're about, see what we teach, listen to uh, the TV programs, listen to some podcasts, start getting that word in your heart and start growing in from faith to faith and yeah. glory to glory with us. Yes, yeah, so and we can't wait to meet you. And this is what the sign looks like now. Yeah. Uh, it will be changing soon, but this is how you know this is the land that the Lord gave us right here on I-74 outside of Wilmington, North Carolina. Yes. We love you. We a few weeks ago about Philippians 4. We even talked about that we were calling it the Philippians 4 path. So let's look at that let's look at that path and let's follow it tonight and let's see what's on the other side of that path that we have not walked on yet. Philippians 4 4 it says rejoice in the Lord always and again I say rejoice. <laughs> so in the Amplified it says it like this rejoice in the Lord always Delight and gladden yourself in Him. So we have a responsibility. We got to stir up that wonderful joy, joy, joy that's a fruit of the Spirit that we have inside of us. So just right now, let's take a praise break. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We bless you, God. We bless you, God. We bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. So... What's cool about this scripture, it says rejoice, and then it says glad and delight yourself, and then again, say rejoice, and so you start over, so it never ends. That's a beautiful thing of this verse. Then we're going to verse 5. This is in the Amplified and in the Amplified Classic. It says, let your gentle spirit, your graciousness and selfishness, mercy, tolerance, and patience be known to all people. Why? Because the Lord is near. He's coming back for the rapture of the church. Let all men know and perceive and recognize your unselfishness, your considerateness, your forbearing spirit. The Lord is near. He's coming soon. So verse 5 is addressing with us to allow the fruit of the Spirit, hallelujah, to be shown in you. Allow the Holy Spirit to to manifest out of you so that people can see your graciousness, your unselfishness, your mercy, your tolerance, your patience, your unselfishness. Why? Because it will lead people to the Lord because he's coming to get, he's coming in the rapture. We want to take as many people as we can. Then we go on to verse 6 and 7 and it says, this is how we are to think in a great nutshell. And this is how Jesus thinks. Do not fret. Or have any anxiety about, you can read this with me, anything. But in every circumstance and in everything, by prayer and petition, which is a different request. We'll get more into that, Lord willing, in the weeks to come. With thanksgiving. 
Continue to make your wants known to God. So verse 6 is saying, don't fret about it. Don't get in anxiety about it, about anything. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Can I get an amen? Uh, do not fret or have any anxiety about anything. And in every circumstance, this is what I want you to do, the Lord says. Pray and then put in a petition to me. And again, we'll talk about those petitions a little later. That is a legal, <laughs> a legal petition with the word of God bringing it to the, to the Lord. Okay, but we'll get more into that, Lord willing. Shepherd Donna, remind me to do that. Okay, and then the third thing he says is to also mix in with your prayer and petition, thanksgiving. So rejoice again, which was sitting right before this in verse 4. Verse 7, and God's peace shall be yours. Fearing nothing from God, being, being content. And it says, which transcends this peace. That comes when you just cast your care. You put that prayer prayer request into the Lord. Mix it with thanksgiving. And then he lets us know that that peace that transcends anything you can even understand shall garrison. Shall garrison. Remember that's that word. Garrison. Stronghold. A fortress. So peace will be the garrison. And it will mount guard over your heart and your mind. Again, we're seeing the the Philippians path on how to receive that peace, to stay in the peace, to, to how, what, how do we do? How do we think about things? Well, we get the fretting and anxiety out. We pray about it and let the Lord deal with it. Hallelujah. We rejoice. That's all mixed in. Then it goes into verse 8. Finally, finally believers, whatever's true. This is that, again, this is that definition of how to think. Whatever's true, honorable, worthy of respect, right, not what's wrong, what's confirmed by God's Word. <laughs> what's confirmed by God's Word. And I said this, and the Lord's reminded me again. I want to say this, that just because something's true, you it also needs to be worthy of respect or honorable or pure and wholesome that you have to mix that into the truth when you're thinking because there's a lot of things that are true that are evil so we don't want to think on the evil we want to think on what's pure what what philippians 4 8 says what's right what's confirmed by god's word what's pure and wholesome what's lovely what brings you peace there are things you can think of right now that you can think of a person or a situation or a memory and it just brings you peace it just makes you smile think on that think on what's admirable what's of courage what's a good report good reputation good repute What's excellent? What's worthy of a praise? Something that you can think of that makes you say, well, hallelujah to the Lord. Right there. You can just think on that. And then the Lord says, think continually on these things. Center your mind on them and implant them in your heart because the more you think on it, it will get down in your heart and it'll bring the peace of God. And then when, and we see in verse 9, practice everything that's sitting on top of verse 9. Practice what you have learned and received and heard and seen in me and model your way of living on it. And the God of peace of untroubled, undisturbed well-being will be with you. Why? Because he can really inhabit this, this, this place that you have put yourself in by rejoicing, by getting the anxiety and fretting out, glory to God, by bringing prayer and petition with thanksgiving, by thinking what's true and holy and worthy of praise was confirmed by God's Word and centering your mind on it, and then you practice it and keep doing it. What happens? You have the result of peace, undisturbed, untroubled well-being. Hallelujah. Now let's go past where we have come tonight. In Philippians 11, it says not, now we're still in Philippians 4, not that I am implying, let's, let's do this. I've got my Amplified Bible, okay? So I'm going to be reading in my uh, Amplified Translation. So I'm going to read verse 10 before we go to verse 11. It says here, this is uh, Paul, 
and he, uh, through the Holy Spirit, is writing to the Philippians church. I was made very happy in the Lord that now you have revived your interest in my welfare. After so long a time, you were indeed thinking of me, but you had no opportunity to show it. Verse 11, now we're on the screen. Not that I am implying that I was any, in any personal want, for I have learned how to be content, satisfied to the point where I am not disturbed or disquieted in whatever state I am. Now, just for tonight, I want to just go over this really quick. This disquieted, it means he has learned not to be. <laughs> he says, satisfied to the point where I am not disturbed and he is not disquieted. And it means he's learned how to not be anxious and nervous and worried or edgy or troubled or uptight or upset or agitated or apprehensive or insecure or disturbed or bothered or displeased, irritated. I'm just kind of skipping around. He has learned not to be angry. He has learned not to be resentful. He has learned all of these things and he has learned how not to complain. He has learned how to not be frustrated. These are all things that he is talking about in verse 11. That he's content. <laughs> and so he's learned this thinking of how to be. And he wrote this while he was imprisoned. Amen. And so when we go on to verse 14. Let's see here. That was verse 11. So in verse 12, Philippians 4, he talks about that uh, he has learned about how to be in every situation, that he has the strength of all things through Christ. That's in 13. And that God is the one who infuses him with strength. That's in 13. Now we're in 14 on the screen. And it says, But it was right and commendable and noble of you to contribute for my needs and to share my difficulties with me. And you Philippians yourselves well know that in the early days of the gospel ministry, when I left Macedonia, no church assembly entered into partnership with me. Now really, tune in right here. No church assembly entered into partnership with me and opened up a debit and credit account in giving and receiving Except you only. Now, Paul is writing this letter to the Philippians, the Philippians church. And they have sown into him. They have given financially into him. And through the unctioning of the Holy Spirit, the Apostle Paul is writing to them, writing to us, that giving, sowing, is a way that literally opens up a debit and credit account in your name. You know how when you went to the bank and you opened up an account and they let you get your checks and your checks have your name and your identity and your address and who you are on that account. In heaven... When you give into the kingdom of God, you are literally, for the first time when you give, you are literally opening up an account that is in the heavenlies. And what is awesome is that the word is saying that you can give into this account and you can receive from this account. You can make a deposit into this account and you can make a withdrawal from your account. Well, how do I make a withdrawal? Well, we got to first learn about harvest before we can even get into the withdrawal because harvest is part of uh, the withdrawing. Now, what is awesome about the kingdom of God is that we've already said He's the Lord of the harvest, He's the Lord of your account. 
He is the Lord of your account because he is the Lord of your harvest. So how does God think about accounts and giving? Well, obviously it's pretty important or he wouldn't have set up a whole system and he has called it your giving and receiving account that he is master over. You know, he is the greatest accountant ever. He says in his word that we will give an account. So he is the accountant. Praise the Lord. Amen. So we're just reading. We're still on that Philippians 4 path. Verse 16, he's still talking about this giving. He's still writing to the Philippians church who has just given into him. For even in Thessalonica, Thessalonica, you sent me contributions for my needs, not only once, but a second time. Not that I seek or am eager for your gift. So he's teaching them a spiritual law right here. He's saying, but I do seek and am eager, excuse me, for the fruit. We're talking about harvest here. So, <coughs> excuse me. So, when you see that there is, side of these accounts, a way that fruit can manifest. Amen. It says here, <coughs> excuse me, not that I seek or am eager for your gift, but I do seek and am eager for the fruit of for the fruit which increases to your credit. The harvest. The harvest. The harvest. So what are we talking about tonight? We're talking about the harvest of God. We're talking about the Lord of your harvest. And it says, But I do seek and am eager for the fruit which, here's a big word, increases to your credit. That's telling us that there's multiplication that increases when you make a deposit you get a credit your harvest has fruit and your harvest increases glory to the king and of blessings that is and here's the witness accumulating to your account and let's really keep this the screen right there i want you to really see this that that there is, there is the harvest of blessing that is accumulating, accumulating, accumulating to your account. And remember, right on top of this is where he's talking about opening up this account in this heavenly account. And how we give into that account is that we give into the work of the ministry. We begin that giving and learning how to give, learning how to receive. And then he says, this is not about me. My needs are taken care of. He's saying that this is for you. This is for your credit. This is for your harvest. This is for the fruit to increase to your credit for your harvest. And, and it's a blessing that is accumulating in your account. Hallelujah. Glory to the king. Glory to the king. Glory to the king. Are you seeing this exciting news in the Philippians 4 path? It starts by saying rejoice. Then it goes into telling us to pray, put in petition, have thanksgiving. Then it goes into saying that peace will come to us. Then it keeps on moving into that this is how you think. Think on what's true and lovely and pure and confirmed by God's word. Center your mind on that. Then it goes into practice these things. Keep doing these things. And then it gets into your harvest. 
And the Lord has put the thinking about your harvest into your life, into our lives, is that He does want you to think on these things. Hallelujah. To think about what you're doing with your sowing because you are accumulating in your giving account in the heavenlies. Yet we are seeing very clearly that what He told us is that it's about giving and receiving. So the Lord of the harvest wants to bring you a harvest here in this life. Glory to God. You won't need a big account. When you get to heaven, of course, you're going to be blessed. There's going to be gifts given out. There's going to be rewards given out. The Bible's very clear about that. And there will be rewards, I am sure, about our alms, giving alms, giving. Because we've seen in Cornelius' life, he was rewarded, hallelujah, by his giving of alms. And it came before the Lord, his giving. See, God is always listening and watching for our giving. The Lord loves to give. The Bible says that the Lord, <laughs> He gave His only Son. He gives. He's the greatest giver. And we as His children should be like Him. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, in the Philippians 4 path that the Lord has been ha having us on, He wants us to remember. Think on this. Think on these things. Think on that you want to increase your harvest of the blessing that it's accumulating in your account. And it was because that this body of believers, led by the Holy Spirit, gave into that ministry, that Paul, his life. And because of that, they made it into the book. Hallelujah. And how did the Philippians church even begin? Well, the jailer that... Paul and Silas, when they were in jail and they were praising and worshiping the Lord, and that, you know, that's why I believe he even was talking to them about rejoicing. The jailer that got born again and, and they go home and he gets born again, his family gets born again, he's the one that history tells us he started the Philippians church. Glory to the king. And now he's sowing back into Paul's life, into his ministry. Amen. And he in that body is. And then the Lord gives a great, great just revelation to this church about the account that they have. Hallelujah. So we're just continuing on Philippians 4. But I have your full payment and more. I have everything I need. So again, Paul's letting them know this isn't about your giving and, 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 and me wanting your gift. It is about right here. I have everything I need. And am amply supplied. Now that I have received from Ephrodite the gifts you sent me, they are the, and this is a wonderful, and, and an ending tonight. I really want you to really hear this, this last part. The gifts that you give to God and His, His kingdom, His work. It's very clear here in verse 18 and 19 how God thinks about it. They, these gifts, are the fragrant odor of an offering and sacrifice which God welcomes and in which He delights. What is the delight of His heart is when He sees His children acting like Him, being a giver, being a sower, loving by giving. That's what He said. That's what he did with Jesus. For God so loved the world that he gave. Love gives. Amen. So these offerings, these, this giving that you give God, he compares it to the burnt sacrifice that was outside of the temple and the tabernacle when people would bring their offerings and these sacrifices, the odor of them would go up to the Lord and they were pleasing and delightful. Now in the New Testament, we can still bring Him offerings and bring our tithes and bring our offerings, bring our, our seeds for the harvest, for the Lord of the harvest. 
and he still sees those offerings as something he welcomes. He sees them as sacrifices from your heart. He sees them and welcomes them, and it brings him delight. It's awesome. It's awesome. Verse 19, And my God will liberally supply, fill to the full, your, your every need according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. You know, we say that scripture a lot in the church body. For my God, he shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Yet, have we forgot to look at the, what's right on top of him doing that? There's a prerequisite here. And it was giving. And he goes on to say in the following verse, the result of giving is that then God and my God and, it means it's, it goes with the verse on top of it, and my God will liberally supply, fill to the full, not the person just giving, getting the, re, receiving the seed, but the one giving the seed will liberally supply, fill to the full, your every need according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. The glory of God is the richness of God. <laughs> the glory of God is the richness of God. And he richly wants to liberally supply anything you need. Yet he needs us to work with the accounting system that is put in place. So how does God think about harvest? How does he see harvest? Well, we've learned tonight that giving delights him. We've learned tonight that it's a he welcomes our gifts and that it is a an, a beautiful odor it smells wonderful and delights him so giving even has a scent to it to him and we have learned tonight that he will richly supply us everything we need according to his riches in glory. We've learned tonight that with our giving, we open up in an account that multiplies and harvests and increases way more than this world Babylonian system could ever. Thank you so much for watching Getting Ready Today. This ministry is called to reach the law and to help the bride of Christ get ready for the wedding day, which is the rapture of the church. All this is made possible through the faithful prayer and financial support of our partners and friends. If you would like to become a part of the JCM family, please contact us. Also, send us your prayer needs and praise report. We would love to hear from you. Until next time, keep getting ready. Jesus is coming.